Did you know that how to paint flowers was the top research question on Google this month when it comes to artists? Hi, my name is Brittany and I'm an artist here to help you with all of your artistic needs so you don't struggle through your process. I'm here today to give you my top tips, tricks, and hacks to paint flowers. So grab your paintbrushes, grab your beverage, and let's get started with these tips. Let's do it together. First things first, before you begin painting your flowers, prime your painting surface with gesso. Why? Because there are so many benefits you will get from painting on a primed surface. How flowers are painted will vary with artists as a result of their painting style or stylistic preferences. A Georgia O'Keeffe flower would be different from a Picasso flower or even a flower made by Van Gogh. An aspect that makes them the same is the capability of its likeness to identify that it's a flower. How realistic it looks will depend on you and your personal preferences. The techniques I'm providing will be a stylistic approach rather than realism because that's just my preference. After you've primed your painting surface, you can begin with the background layer. As you can see, I decided to have a more stylistic approach by using the inspiration from another artist. The artist I chose was Raymond Staperins. I'll insert his name right here so you can do a little research on him if you would like. After priming your surface and preparing your background, Ensure that you have a reference photo, um, preferably one that you've taken yourself or one that is a commercially free image that you've gotten off of the internet. Here's an image of the picture I took for the tulips that I wanted to paint today. I will be doing something a little bit different that you've probably not seen some artists do, which will be to change the color from the original reference photo. After observing the background that I have with how colorful it is, I made the decision to paint white tulips instead of the purple ones that you see in the image. Or should I say violet? Reviewing the checklist, you've gessoed your canvas, you've began your background, you have your reference image. The next thing you'd want to do is actually observe your image and begin to make some choices such as the placement of where you would like to have your flower and also observing its shape when you begin painting. If you're really not good with eyeballing your image just to get an overall shape, I would recommend using the grid method. I will add the link to my earth painting on how to use the grid method if you might need that for your flower. After painting your flower petals, begin to add the leaves that's on your flower if you have that within your reference image. Only worry about doing your best because we can always go back and clean up some of our shapes and forms later because guess what? we're using paint. Now that you have your line drawing complete, you can begin to add in the color of your flower. If you're using a white flower image, just like I am, be sure to observe color temperature when you are painting. Some areas of the flower will be warmer, while some others will be cooler. One of the tips that I was taught when I was going to college was to not use black or to use black sparingly. I often opt not to use black, but how I get a deeper color is by using complementary colors across from one another on the coloring wheel. My favorite colors to use would be orange and blue, but you can use other colors such as yellow and purple or even red and green. What you decide to use really depends on your preferences. I just feel that I get a better result when I use blue and orange as opposed to yellow and purple. My next tip that I have for you is to observe your brush strokes when you are going back over some of these shapes. When you manipulate your brush stroke to actually imitate the shape of whatever you are painting, it gives it a better form. One problem you might encounter while painting will be colors mixing into your paintbrush that you didn't initially need in it. If you encounter this problem, of course, while you're painting, be sure to wipe off the excess color before you continue with your following brush stroke. Get a paper towel and wipe off your brush before you move forward. Continue with painting the petals that you have on your flower. I'm making some slight changes um, and adjustments to the color. 
If you were to observe your picture again, you will notice there are some darker aspects within the individual petals and some lighter aspects. Make sure you pay attention to those areas just to create more dimension and to make it look, of course, realistic to what you're looking at. People won't have your reference image, but believe it or not, people can still tell when something does not look close to accurate. So pay attention to what you're observing in your image and try to get as close as you can to having it accurate. Now it's time to begin adding the highlights in your painting. Highlights are the areas light is hitting on the surface of an object. They are also the lightest areas within your painting. I accomplished mixing the highlight color for my leaves by mixing green, yellow, and a touch of white. When applying the lighter color, I opted to apply it using a broken color technique that shows some of the color beneath the top application. Initially, if you need the highlights to be a little bit lighter, you can remix the same color combination that I have given if you have green leaves like I do and go over it with a lighter color application. After adding the highlights, begin to add darker tones within your painting. As mentioned before, I'm creating my darker tones by using orange and blue, my favorite complementary colors to mix together. Use this mixture to add line details and shadows within shadowed areas. After adding the darker color, make sure you blend out the hard edges, making it a softer edge as it would normally appear on a flower. The highlights and the darker tones are added, so what now? Now is the time to begin refining your image. Use the colors of the background to reshape and refine your color if there's something that you see that doesn't look quite right. I hope all of my tips, tricks, and hacks are great for you in creating your own flower piece. Let me know below how your flower turned out and even tag me on my social media account so I can see how your images look and even possibly critique them if you would like me to do so. My name is Brittany. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for my next video that I have in store. Thank you so much for watching. As always, bye.